Hey friends, welcome back to the Intuitive Lens YouTube channel uh, where I make weekly videos discussing the weekly astrology. So we're talking about May 22nd through the 28th. We are officially in Gemini season. Ideas are flowing. We're discussing things we care about, things we're excited about. We're learning a lot and this month especially about ourselves. Um, last week, we tapped into our desires through way of our values and the way we want to experience beauty in our lives, beauty and love. And it may have come, and maybe it is still coming, as a realization or a challenge with areas in life that are just begging to be transformed. What is our relationship to love? What is our relationship to beauty? This week, um, we have a lot of energy coming from the moon, Venus, which is in Cancer, and the moon and Cancer are like best friends, as well as um, Mars having just moved into Leo, as well as a Leo moon in the midweek. Okay, so what's being highlighted here for us is the fifth house. Fifth house of creativity, our childhood, passion, pleasure, play. Um, at the top of the week, moon is conjunct Venus. Remember about the inciting incident that I may have brought up at the end of last week's video? Feel free to go check that out. This is like <laughs> hookup energy. This is inciting incident. This is vice versus virtue. Um, there may be, you know, I know Mercury is no longer retrograde, but this totally reads like with everything else going on. And also the moon is in Cancer while this is happening. We are, we may be so sensitive that we don't know or may not be totally aware of because it also conjunct is somehow less there's less awareness between planets or astral bodies that are conjunct i mean on the wheel astrological wheel they're like close to each other which means it's like sitting next to somebody at dinner we're looking in the same direction we're not looking at each other we can't see each other very clearly so when the moon and the Venus in Cancer, okay, moon is in Cancer, Venus is, duh, they're both in Cancer, because um, this is our sensitivity about what we find beautiful. Everything that we are willing to protect with our lives, that is the power of Cancer. The Some people will say it's the motherly qualities of Cancer that give them their super strength. But they're also deeply intuitive. Cancer is extremely powerful in their own emotions, masterful even. So even though they may appear sensitive, or sorry, even though they have, they may be emotionally sensitive, or um, they wield that as a super strength. They can understand. Cancer understands how sensitivity can operate in the bodies of other people in the body of the collective they are aware here <laughs> we may this conjunct feels like we are momentarily forgetting about our collective sensitivity and so inciting incident something may happen that will question our virtues remember last week we talked a lot about values and let's talk about where this might be coming from. We have Venus square Chiron. That's Venus squaring off, challenged by Chiron. Chiron is the astral body. I think it's an asteroid, actually, that indicates our wounding. The wounding can come from childhood. It can come from past life. Really... Once you discover what your Chiron is and you can do some self-study about it, you can 
decide for yourself based on how you feel and what you know intuitively and just factually about your life what is that karmic wounding chiron is very karmic we are entering the karmic classroom actually this week deep soul wounds especially around the fifth house extreme sensitivity and passion oh lordy <laughs> i'm already bracing myself for this week um, as well as mars which is in leo is square the north node north node is the point that point that is a moon po nodal point on the moon that allegedly is like your destiny what you are here to master in chiron the wound like once you heal that for yourself you learn how to heal that for others so take a look where chiron and north node are in your chart because it, it matters they're being challenged right now because something about how we're experiencing love abundance and something about how we're taking action in life don't seem to line up or maybe there may be some challenges that will highlight areas for us this week where things want to shift or to change indeed this is the cosmic dance of destiny and desire uh, intensity fireworks <clears throat> okay let's move on venus is sextile uranus this is a very pleasant, um, harmonious aspect. This can feel very creative. You might, Uranus is sort of like a surprise energy. So <laughs> um, this could be about creativity. Um, I'll just read off my notes because I, I really don't want to ad lib anything here. Creativity and social life will flourish. This is a sexy aura quick fling quick fling i mean it's yeah i don't do relationship readings normally like don't get me wrong i can um it's not my specialty i would say i have other specialties above um like love and sex readings there's plenty of amazing tarot readers out there and astrologists who will focus on that and that is amazing okay I just cannot avoid that this is what the energy is presenting to me here. I just don't, um, I don't feel that I want to go very far into that and give advice in, in that area for you all, okay? <clears throat> by the end of the week, <clears throat> excuse me, by the end of the week we have Jupiter conjunct the North Node. There's Jupiter again showing up and saying like, hey, you're meant to go in this direction. And we may not be, again, with the conjunction, we may not be totally aware. This is the first quarter moon um, as well, which is in Virgo. We are growing. We are doing things that are all, may, we may consider alternative to what we have done in the past. And it may be showing us, um, we may be experiencing growth in new ways or prosperity is entering our life that we could have not previously anticipated um, in other words this could feel like an adventure you're on a mission you have you feel you have purpose you feel lucky uh, and virgo energy here this is providing us with with that bit of clarity of mind we're feeling organized um, virgo the virgo moon as well i will say because we are receiving when we can use the moon um, day to day to derive some more information about what can make us feel more stable, more secure. This isn't always the thing that you want to be doing, but I'm just saying maybe, maybe it is. In this case, if you want to ground yourself a little bit more by the end of the week, the first quarter moon is in Virgo. The lesson about, in, in, in that case, in this moon, is to tolerate the messiness of life. And I wrote here, indulge in the ooh-la-la. -la. <laughs> um, let's see here. Release expectations. This is a turning point. Teachers are all around you. Teachers are all around you. You are attracting wealth, abundance, good fortune. Um, just don't overdo it. Because Leo will 
want to overdo it. And Mars is in Leo. Okay, so as a collective, we're all feeling expressive. We want to put ourselves out there, very creative, and on stage. And on stage. Okay, so I want to leave that there. Is there anything else I could say about this? No, that's all I want to say. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy these astrology readings. Um, if you're called to leave a comment below, please do. Let me know how you're doing, um, what resonates for you. Like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. I really, truly appreciate your beautiful energy and have a good week.